Before we can speak about an adverse event to a subject during a clinical investigation, two prerequisites need to be fulfilled. The subject needs to be enrolled in the clinical investigation, which involves signature of the informed consent at the very least. And, two, either the device has been used on the subject or he or she has undergone active eligibility screening as per the clinical investigation plan, involving examinations which in normal routine medical practice would not be performed. The above stated prerequisites may happen nearly simultaneously, but usually there is some lag time between signing the informed consent and the start of treatment or active screening. Anything that may happen to the patient during that lag time would not be considered as a study-related adverse event. In some studies, subjects sign informed consent but are only considered fully enrolled and allocated a subject number upon passing all screening tests. In such a case, it is advisable to have a separate screening number and specific case report form, which records all events during the screening phase, thus ensuring clear differentiation between adverse events related to any screening examination and those occurring while the device is being used on the subject. There are two main objectives in effective safety reporting during the clinical investigation. One, to protect subjects' health from major risk factors. The first risks are those inherent to the use of the device, which may be related to the device itself and or the procedure involved in using the device. The second risks are those inherent to participation in the clinical investigation, 